Excuse me about that. I forgot my mic off. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Story of Hell 31. I'm so glad to have you with me this week um, with our n another Story with Hala. Um, we are, um, so as you all know, or as you all may know, uh, Women International Women's Day was on March 8th. And we are a little bit late to that. Um, but I am going to be doing some Women's Day uh I'm going to be doing a Women's Day quote, Women's Day craft, and a Women's Day book, and just a whole Women's Day themed episode. Also, um, if you were wondering why I wasn't here last week, um, I'm completely fine now. I didn't feel so good last week, but I'm okay now. And um, I was going to talk about International Women's Day last week, but I'm doing it this week, and I have a book planned out and everything uh, planned out. So I'm so excited to share it with you. Um, so this week's quote is about Women's International Women's Day. Uh, the quote is, each time a woman stands up for herself without knowing it possibly, without claiming it, she stands up for all women. So if I'm going to explain this a bit better, um, every single time a woman stands up for herself, every time she, she stands up to to people who don't support women's rights. Every time she speaks up for her right, every time she every time she does a great feminist feminist act, she's standing up for all women because if even one little action to help women's rights will help all women in the future and we will all have a safe and happy place where the whole world accepts women and the uh, and People st uh, start normalizing men jobs for women as well. Um, like, for example, you might walk by and you might see women driving a bus. And some people would think, oh, well, that's a man job because it's a big and strong bus that you need to steer, steer around. And only a man can do it. And, um, well... Why not? Why why can't a woman do it? Women can also be strong. Women are the same, the same species, the same, basically the same people as men. So why should they get the same rights? Um, it's really sometimes you think the world is so silly because there's really no difference between both genders, and we should all have our own rights, no matter who we are. All right, so. We are now going to move on to the book, and I'm so excited. I've been, um, I'm not sure what the expression is, I think hanging off my chair for like the whole week uh, for this book. I really like this book. It's more of a longer one, but I like it, and mostly because we're going to be talking about Malala, and I'm sure you've all heard of her. Um, the book will explain uh, further into who she is. So I'm going to share my screen right now, and we're going to start with the book. All right. Again, I'm going to be reading on Epic. Um, very good website so that I'm going to be reading on. Um, and we're going to be reading the book Malala, an activist for girls' education. <clears throat> Malala is born at dawn in 1997. She is the first child of Zidadin. You uh, excuse me one moment before I start. Excuse me if I miss. Uh, mispronounce some of these names. Um, I don't know. I just might mispronounce some of them. So excuse me if I do. Zayad Zayodin, Yusuf Yusufzi, Yusufzai. Excuse me. I, I mispronounced these. And Torpika. They live in the large city of Mingora, which spreads out across the depths of the Swat Valley in Pakistan. Their home across the the street from a school for girls. Their home is across the street from a school for girls that Zay Zayodin founded, the Khushalf School. Excuse me again. Malala's father is not sorry that his child is a girl, as some new fathers in their country might be. Zayodin is very fond of his Pashtun people, but he is not as fond of some of their traditions. Z so Ziodin asks, fr asks friends and family to throw di dried fruits, candles, and coins into her cradle, as they would for a boy. Malala grows up with the smell of notebooks in the air. It doesn't take long for her first little brother, 
to arrive. His name is Chush, Chushal, like his father's school. He is named Chushal, like his father's school. The two children run together in the classrooms after school is over or play hide and seek with the neighbors. They fly kites on the rooftop and try to touch the sky. Malala and Chushal look out to the city toward Mount Elam, where the snow never melts. Malala loved, loved her grandfather's village, way up in the mountain, far from pollution in Mangora. There, the water in the lakes and waterfalls is pure. The nuts are ab abundant, and the honey is delicious. In the winter, people make snow bears. But Malala does not love all the village stories, like one about Sh Shahida, who was sold to an old man for marriage. In the Pashtun mountains, even more than in the city, men are the ones who visit, who are visible in society and the workspace, while women stay at home and must obey the men. Most women, like Malala's mother, cannot read or write. Malala likes to climb up on the roof at home in Mangora so she can listen to the sounds of the sky, the chatter of the birds, and the words of her father talking about politics with his friends while they drink cardamom cardamom tea. They talk about how the tail Taliban, a powerful and violent political group, has set another school on fire. Malala's father and his friends hate that the ta Taliban wants students to study stripped, very conservative interpretations of the Quran. They call the Tali Taliban an ignorant group and worry that it will cause terrible problems. Zayodin often shares ideas with his daughter. Malala knows that she is lucky to have thoughtful parents. Her mother loves a Pashto song that goes like this. Don't kill doves in the garden. You kill one and the others won't come. Malala thinks about what this meant. Excuse me. A terrible earthquake shakes the region on October 8, 2005. The mountain villages are reduced to dust. Soon afterward, Malala realized that her father is worried about something else too. A man named Fazula, who is in charge of nearby Taliban, scares Ziyodin. Faz, Faz, Fazlula wants to close Ziyodin's school, his school for girls. Faz, Fazlula, excuse me again, takes advantage of people's sadness about the earthquake. Time and time again, through his local radio station, he tells them that their sins caused the earthquake. He tells them to stop listening to music and watching movies. He says that this will make everything better. Malala's father is heartbroken. He rejects the use of religion to threaten freedom. But people worry, what is Fazlula telling the truth? What if Fazlula telling the truth? is telling the truth. Fear settles in the valley. Some people throw their televisions, computers, CDs, and other belongings into, f into fires. But the Taliban insists that even more needs to be done. People stop dancing. Beauty, par beauty par parlors close. Men stop shaving because the Taliban requires that beards are worn. Women's bodies and faces are covered by burqas, long cloth garments that flow from head to toe. The Taliban is on patrol. Taliban members arrest people who disobey them and whip or kill them before they resist the new rules. Ziodin is afraid, but he dares to disagree. He allows Malala to speak out against the Taliban in the September 20, 2008 speech, covered by newspapers and television stations. There she asks, how dare the Taliban take away my basic right to education? She is only 11 years old. At two, as 2008 ends, the Taliban announces another ban. Girls no longer have the right to go to school as of January 15, 2009. How can they stop her from going to school? Malala is upset. Her friends are angry too. They have already blown up hundreds of schools and no one has done anything. Then an opportunity arrives. Malala is re recruited to write about, her, about girls and education. Her first blog post, written under the Psyodin, Psyodonim Gul Makai, appears on the British Broadcasting Corporation's website. Diary of a Pakistani Schoolgirl, Saturday, January 3rd, 2009. I am afraid. 
I had a terrible dream with military hel- with military yesterday with military helicopters and the Taliban. Malala's words would not stop the Taliban. The group goes farther north and uses even more violence. Soon there are peace agreements between, between the Pakistani government and the Taliban, but agreements don't work in the end. The Taliban continues to use violence against people. Then tanks and guns arrive in the valley. Malala and her family abandon their house and travel to the village where her grandparents live. They stay in four cities over three months before they can return home. Mingora is again in ruins, but the Taliban has been driven away. Schools are rebuilt so everyone can study, even girls. Malala wants everyone to get an education. Malala is elected speaker of the child assembly associated with the Khpal Kaur Foundation, which promotes the rights of children. This, the, in this leadership role, she begins as a children's rights activist. But soon the Taliban returns to the valley. Schools are d- destroyed again. Supporters of freedom are executed. Malala doesn't get discouraged. Although she is not yet 14, she is already an important person in her country. She continues to write her blog and fight for girls' rights, right to an education. Malala is often right, invited to speak and receives a lot of assistance for her campaign. The Pakistani government awards her first, her the first ever, first ever National Youth Peace Prize. By 2011, Malala was so successful, she's able to create an educational foundation. It also helps her and people who support her work. But her family is threatened by the Taliban. The militant group does not like her father's schools or Malala's activism. On October 9, 2012, Malala is riding home on the school bus. It stops suddenly. A man shouts to the driver, Is this the Khush... Khushal school bus. A second man enters the bus and yells, Who is Malala? No one, nobody answers, but some students look at their friend. It is obvious who Malala is. She is the only one who has taken off her headscarf on the bus. One of the men shoots Malala three times. Everyone screams. Two other girls are hurt. Malala slumps forward onto her best friend's lap. The bus driver speeds to the nearest hospital and SWAT. Pakistani president, along with other pol- politicians and famous Muslims, condemns the ass- ass- assassination attempt. The Taliban claims responsibility. Malala is not doing well. Her father wishes out loud that he could take her place. The doctors and the government decide to accept an offer for Malala to be treated at a hospital in Birmingham, England. Malala must go alone because it's too dangerous for her father to leave her mother and brothers alone in Pakistan. She is confused when she awakens in England, but she speaks on the phone to her parents. Finally, her family arrives. Letters and gifts are sent from all over the world. After several operations and a lot of time to heal, Malala takes classes in Birmingham. The Taliban does not silence Malala. She keeps fighting for education rights. There are more than 5 million children in Pakistan who don't have the right to go to primary school. Most of them are girls. Malala empathizes with such young girls in other countries, such as Afghanistan, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Nepal, who live where education for girls is valued. Many people believe that women should stay at home to watch the younger children cook, younger children cook, do housework, and get water from the wells. Girls are often required to marry at a very young age. Many families believe that only boys should have jobs. Malala disagrees with all of these ideas. On Malala's 16th birthday, July 12, 2013, hundreds, hundreds of people around the, from around the world would hear her speak at the United Nations, at the United Nations in New York City. Malala wears a shawl that belonged to Benazir Bhutto, a Pakistani prime minister who was assassinated. I am here to speak up for the right of education for every child. I want education for the sons and daughters of the Taliban and all the terrorists and extremists. She speaks about Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and Mahatma Gandhi. Poverty, ignorance, injustice, racism, and the deprivation of basic rights are the main problems faced by both, both men and women. She speaks about women's rights and girls' education. There was a time when women social activists asked men to stand up for their rights, but this time we'll do it by ourselves. 
and Lilla puts hope in her hearts and tears in her eyes. One child, one teacher, one pen, and one book can change the whole world. The next year, Malala receives the Nobel Peace Prize. At 17, she is the youngest person ever to receive the prestigious award. But the beautiful Swat Valley, where pomegranate fig and fig trees bloom, still isn't free. Malala and her family can't go home because they are under death threats. Weapons still rule. Shots ring out, along with bombs from drones. Fighting results in victims on both sides, sometimes an innocent, sometimes innocent victims. Malala talks with the president of the United States about the situation, but with the hope that peace will triumph quickly in Pakistan. Malala dreams of books and notebooks instead of war in her beloved valley. The Nobel Peace Prize gives Malala wings. She visits Syria and refugee camps in Lebanon, 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 Lebanon. Lebanon, excuse me. She supports school projects in Nigeria and more. Malala has been known worldwide ever since the United Nations designated July 12th, 2013, her 16th birthday as Malala Day. The, the day celebrates that every child should have the right to go to school, to learn, to write and count, and to know the happiness of reading freely. That is the end of our book. Thank you everyone so much for reading this book with me. I hope you all know a bit more about Malala now. Um, I think this book is absolutely amazing. It's like definitely one of my favorite books. Um, I love the whole story about Malala. And now you know that she is the youngest person ever to receive the, receive the Nobel Peace Prize and that she wanted women's rights and education for all the children around the world and that she was shot three times. It's crazy. Her, her journey is inspirational, her stories inspirational it's really i i love the story of malala and i hope you all will appreciate the story of malala and help and help uh, people around you educate themselves about her and educate themselves about women's rights in general excuse me again if i made some mistakes with pronouncing everything um uh, just there's some words that i couldn't pronounce which i need to work better on but um excuse me if i did uh mispronounce any of the words so moving on the craft we're going to be doing is um a craft it's an activity but a craft at the same time um it's something really simple what you're gonna need is a jar any type of jar i'm just picking this one because i thought it looked nice some one uh piece of colored paper or more if you're using more uh, for now, we're just going to be cutting up four hearts, but I'll explain more after. You're going to need some tape, some scissors, and some toothpicks or sticks like these. You can get these from like Dollarama. These are kebab sticks, and they work perfectly fine. And just make sure that they fit inside the bottle that you're getting. All right, so I'm going to, for oh, excuse me, one more thing you're going to need to be having some markers or pens to, to use. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to grab, we're going to cut out four hearts for now because of four people. And we're going to call this hmm, our jar of women's rights. So in our jar of women's rights, we are going to be cutting out four hearts and putting the names of four very inspirational women. Um, and we you at in any time here comes the activity part. Anytime you and your family learn about a new uh, important woman in history, you can add a name to the jar. So we are going to be doing four inspirational women, maybe five actually. I just thought of another one, and we are going to be writing them down and putting them inside the jar to add to our women's rights jar. So let's start on that now. It's a very simple craft. It doesn't take too long and it's very fun and sort of has like a fun activity side to it. So the woman we're going to be choosing are, the names are Mary Curie and Mary Curie is a scientist um, and she is the Nobel Prize winner. And of course, uh, being a scientist and a woman, of course, you must have faced faced a bunch of discrimination and a bunch of 
really terrible, terrible things in her life caused by people who don't believe in women's rights. And that is why we all, we all need to educate ourselves more about her. And I hope to be reading more about these people, um, more throughout our, my story with Halas and hoping to find some stories to read about them. So Mary Curie. Next is Rosa Parks. We read about Rosa Parks before, and if you haven't saw, if you have not seen that episode before, I believe it was episode twenty something. I think 27, 26, something like that. And we're going to we already read about her, and I'm sure you all remember the story of Rosa Parks. Um, so Rosa Parks was a very important person in Black history. Rosa Parks was um, excused off of a bus. Uh, because a white person wanted to sit there in the neutral section where she should have been. It's not like she was in the white section, which still she deserves. She has a right to be in there. Um, and she still sat on the bus, um, even though even though the police officer told her to get off of the bus. She still sat and she said, I have the right to sit here. What are you going to do with that? You know, she has the right to sit there even because she was in the neutral section. And she has the right to sit in the white section anyways. And you probably know the Rosa Parks bus protest after they after they everyone heard the story of Rosa Parks and how she went to prison for refusing to get out of her spot uh, they organized a bus protest sort of like a boycott where no one bought and no one went on uh, public um, public transportation public transportations and you had to pay for these so it everyone was like please come on our buses and stuff but everyone refused to go on there, and this protest lasted for about a year and a half. And black people who had cars or white people allies, they they helped um, they helped black people or people who were doing the protest uh, carpool around uh, because they needed somewhere to go. So that's a very important person in history, and we read about her. Next is Elisa Freja. Uh, Elisa Freja is a big feminist for women's rights. She has her own company and she funds for women's rights regularly. She funded so much money over to help women's rights and to make a better world for women in our generation. Next we have, uh, this is a, a, a um, if you don't know her name, I mean, I'm sure you do. Khadija bint Khwailid. Khadija bint Khwailid was the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad and a very, very, very important person in history. She was the very first Muslim. And even before she was the wife of Muhammad, she was a very successful monarch. And being a woman, that must have been very hard for her. She must have had faced a bunch of discrimination in her life. And she supported when she heard about Muhammad's beliefs. She supported him all the way. So we need Sayyidina Muhammad's beliefs. She supported him all the way. So we need to educate ourselves about Khadija bint Khwailid. And I'm sure you all know about her. So those are the four women that we are going to be writing about on our hearts. So let us cut those out right now. So again, if your child ever comes home from school or something, or if and they come and be like, oh, like I learned about this new important woman in history, um, then be sure to add to your jar of women's rights and make sure to add some new names. Keep in mind, these hearts should be fairly small just because we need more space for all the different hearts. So my first heart was kind of wonky, so we're going to do a quick other one. It's hard to get the two sides to match perfectly. All right. Let me quickly cut that out. All right. Then. Okay, that's our first art. It's it's fairly small and it can be glued on to this giant stick over here and we can stick it in. Make sure you're gluing these on the pointy side just because maybe some of them could fall out and they could hurt people from the pointy side. But if you glue it on from here, it's not going to hurt anyone. On these kebab sticks, there's usually a really sharp side over here. So just make sure you're gluing it on that side so no one gets hurt. So let's start off by writing, writing about Mer Mary Curie. And we're going to write a little bit of a description. 
female scientist. Just a small description. And we're going to be gluing that on our kebab stick. So let me grab my tape and glue this on. Um, I have been using uh, hot glue a lot for the past few stories, and it burns a lot. So I'm going to save myself some hot glue burns and use tape instead, which still works perfectly fine. Let me just cut off this part. Okay, there we go. And glue it on. Perfect. So we have our first heart. Uh, you can't you can't really see the writing over here properly on the video, but it's in there, and we're gonna pop that in our jar of women's rights. So again, you can add to this jar of women's rights anytime you want to, um, and write the names of those who you learn about in in history. Next, we're going to be writing about uh, Rosa Parks. Parks. Another. So Rosa Parks, our small description is um, an important and inspiring civil rights uh, leader. Um, again, uh, one thing I wanted to address is that Mary Curie died of cancer uh, because of some harsh chemicals because she's a scientist and she died from cancer uh, from the chemicals that she was using. So RIP to Mary Curie, we need to all remember her and we need to all learn about her and educate about her. We're going to do now Rosa Parks. Again, our little description was uh, Rosa Parks was an important and inspiring civil rights and uh, women's rights activist. I believe the song. Okay, and we have our second heart in our jar of women's rights. The third heart is going to be uh, Elisa Freja. Let's cut out the heart. Oh, this is a very small heart. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, Lisa. Women's Elisa Freja, women's rights, rights activist and feminist. We're gonna glue that again to our little kebab stick. These can be found really anywhere, and I'm sure you have some of them if you've ever done barbecue. Um, and of course, if you're an Arab, you're gonna have a bunch of these laying around because, I mean, who doesn't love kebab? Add that to our jar, and the last person, our most important person, is Khadija bint Khawaila. Oh, this is a warped heart. These hearts are hard to cut out when they're not symmetrical. Trying to make them big but not too small because you don't want too small hearts and you don't want 
hearts that are way too big so that they won't fit with the rest of the hearts and that they'll go on a big mess. Because if you're going to be adding a bunch of, if you plan on adding more than these uh, four women to your, uh, to your jar of women's rights, then I, I believe you should do the hearts just in, in between, not too big and not too small. Khadija and Walid. Sayyidna Muhammad. The wife and first Muslim. Okay, and we're glue that on our last stick. So maybe you could set a goal, like you aim for one or two hearts every day. Uh, so that will have, a, you'll have like a little activity to do and you could aim for one or two hearts uh, every single day. So you'll learn about one or two uh, feminists and civil rights or women's rights activists and abolitionists. So we have finished our four people in our jar of women's rights. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this week's story with Hella 31, and I hope you will add to our jar right here. This can stay really anywhere as a room decoration or in the living room as a fun little activity uh, or craft. So thank you everyone for attending Story with Hella 31. I'm so happy to have you here with with me in Story with Hella 31. I hope you all learned more about Malala if you didn't know these few facts about her, and I hope you all enjoyed the story and the quote as much as I did. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you next week, uh, Wednesday, 5 o'clock, on Story with Hella, 32.